Hello there, my name is Ray Lewis and I'm a local marine environmentalist who's fairly keen in the Bayside area and uh, thinking about COVID-19 and people being locked in at home and so many of our friends who go to the beach so often are worried about it these days I thought that if I did a series of interviews on this mobile phone and I can tell you interviewing on a mobile phone isn't that easy but if I did a few interviews with people who are reasonably well known and committed to the environment and those other works, um, that it might be good fun and it might give us a chance if they're done in a natural easy style um, to sort of relate to them in a sort of socialising way and also feel for a little while that we're outside as well and maybe they're two good things so I decided to call it as you'll know from the titles COVID-19 um, uh, cabin fever series. So I hope you have fun and uh, you enjoy them. Worth trying anyway. Bye for now. I'm filming now on the Mentone Cliffs, that very, very splendid set of cliffs between Bow Morris and Mentone, where the great fossils are found. And I've had the good fortune to come across Murray Orr. And Murray is the president of BESS. What's BESS? Uh, BESS is, is Bayside Earth Sciences Society, which is a uh, group of people which were formed to um, protect and ensure that, that future generations of people uh, uh, can access uh, fossils at uh, this site. Um, we're tied up um, uh, with members of the museum, which is um, a great uh, asset to have for our uh, society. Uh, we regard ourselves as the uh, premier uh, group uh, with fossils in Bay Morris. How old are the fossils here, Murray? The, uh, uh, they look, I hear lots of stories about them, but I'd really appreciate your comment. Uh, all the fossils uh, in these cliffs are about five and a half million years old, very slightly, but uh, uh, between five and six million years of age. Um, it's the late Miocene era and uh, an era of uh, uh, massive climate change uh, where we saw uh, a lot of animals go extinct, uh, some uh, still in existence in other parts of the world, uh, but um, a lot of the animals here you only find in Bay Morris. It was also a site where you find both land and sea-based animals, which is a very rare uh, occurrence around Australia, and um, particularly megafauna, uh, um, including uh, large whales, uh, Diprotodon, which was the size of a rhinoceros and lived on the land, and even uh, marsupial lion, which uh, was a, um, a, a, an animal about four times the size of a Tasmanian tiger. Uh, so there were a wide variety of animals found in this area. How, how do they appear in the water here? You know, why, what, 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 what do we find them here? Why don't we find them up at Wood End or um, back at Bow Morris or something? Okay, well, yeah. okay. I'm still being taped? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, the reason why we find uh, all these animals here is that um, we had an uplift on the cliffs and the sea is constantly eroding those cliffs um, at about 300 millimetres a year. Uh, on average, and um, you'll see on the point here just in front of us a large rock fall which happened last year uh, where a piece of the cliff fell down. Now out of that um, rubble on the ground uh, we've uh, found uh, a number of interesting fossils, um, some of which are being uh, studied and there's scientific papers being written on them now. Um, but uh, uh, because um, you've got the access to the uh, eroding stratas, you can find the fossils. Uh, these fossils probably exist right through to Caulfield, where this bay used to be uh, extend right through to Caulfield, um, but all of that is now silted in, and uh, it's under the buildings, uh, probably, um, uh, probably uh, 20 to 30 metres under the, uh, the housing that uh, runs from here through to Caulfield. Um, so here is really the only point where you find access to these fossils. So they appear in the water. They appear in the water because of the cliff collapse. So you get a chance to see them without excavating. Yeah. Uh, the um, the reason why you find them both in the water and on the foreshore 
is that um, these strata uh, continue down beneath the water, uh, probably uh, two or three metres beneath the water level at the moment, and all of that is eroding. And there's different strata with different fossils in them uh, as we go down. Um, it was considered that the main fossil bearing strata was a nodule layer uh, at the bottom, uh, at the lowest level under the water, um, but some magnificent fossils of, uh, of world scientific importance have been found that have obviously fallen out of the cliffs. Murray, are there any rules about finding fossils here and um, any rules about the cliffs themselves? Uh, what do people do if they find a fossil? You know, general advice. Yeah, um, the number one rule here is that you will not dig. Uh, digging is uh, banned by both the local council and the state government and uh, any digging can attract fines of up to $10,000. So all the fossils we find are both above and below water are uh, loose and have eroded from the surrounding strata and rock. Um, so if, um, if you find a fossil uh, down here, uh, there's lots of them that are not rare and uh, are worthy of keeping. Remember it's survived for, for five and a half million years uh, rolling around and being fossilised and then uh, worn out of the rock and thrown up on the beach. Um, and uh, if you find one, um, hang on to it. Um, but if you think uh, it may be a rare fossil, which is quite uh, easily come by around here, then uh, you need to contact the museum. I think, uh, Murray, if it's okay with you, we might go back past the, uh, the Yacht Club and over to those cliffs that I'm just filming. I think it's a lovely little bay there that we can uh, um, do something about and maybe find something with a bit of luck. That sounds like a good idea, right? I'm down here today to interview Murray Orr, who's the president of BESS, uh, and uh, we'll ask him a few questions in a moment, but what a splendid environment this place is. It's really something. Okay then, we're on our way back now via the Yacht Club uh, to the other beach, and uh, great walk down here, nice place, really nice place. Oh yeah, and Murray's going on through there down to the little, the little beach or shell beach we call fossil beach. And you see the, uh, the cliffs of the new beach turning up there. The, uh, the bay looks absolutely fabulous, Murray. Uh, I'm just, uh, what's it all about? Why is it so important to see the Well, uh, this is um, a different section of uh, the fossil beach and um, the type of fossils you find here are slightly different to the other side. Uh, we've got a bit of a representation of, um, of what you can find down here. Um, and um, these, um, these beaches, uh, when the tide's out, extend right round to the uh, marine sanctuary and you're not allowed to go into the marine sanctuary area at all uh, to look for fossils. You cannot pick up a fossil in the marine sanctuary area. So we're restricted to this part of the beach. Um, this uh, sign um, gives you um, a good idea of the various types of fossils that you can find, uh, a bit of a uh, layout map, and most importantly, um, these are warning signs from both uh, DELP and the Bayside City Council. Now, this one carries a penalty of up to $2,000, and this one $10,000, and they can both be levied uh, together. So you could be up for $12,000 if you're caught digging in that foreshore, um, any part of it. Uh, so um, just uh, respect where you are and uh, if you find a fossil that's great, it's yours, but do not dig for them. It's a pretty impressive sign that Murray had organised and put up here. Uh, we thank the uh, Bayside City Council uh, for uh, uh, organising that sign. Um, we just supplied the uh, the photos of the fossils um, for them, and um, they did the rest. Got to be careful around here.
as you can see it's an area you can get into and also it's unusually uh, just un unusually nice with cliffs and plants and the, the sea and the calmness of it all we're really lucky uh, Ray uh, these are quite common down here called Lavinia woods eye they're a small sea urchin and uh, this is a fairly large one um, we'll bring it up to the camera and uh, this is a uh, a good example of uh, something that if you come down with your kids uh, you can find uh, something like that fairly easily uh, and uh, you can take that home. That's five and a half million years old so um, I think it's um, it's worth uh, respecting that uh, as a um, specimen. Now there's other specimens that you can find down here and I've I've brought two down and it shows you a bit of a difference of what you can find. Um, this is a shark tooth and that shark tooth is from a type of mako, short fin mako shark and uh, these also five and a half million years old and can be found uh, quite uh, readily not as common as Lavinia but uh, quite readily found. These are not uh, necessarily important scientifically because there's been thousands of them already found. Um, finally I'd like to show you something that looks very inconspicuous it's uh, in a little um, uh, container it's called a sea pen and the last one of these was found in Victoria down near Apollo Bay in the 1860s and this is the only example of this that's uh, known to exist at Beaumaris Bay um, but if you find one of these this is a museum piece and should be taken to the museum uh, for their uh, conservation and storage. Um, so you never know what you can find on this beach. Uh, there's been some amazing things found by our, our group and our members and um, I wish you lots of luck in trying to find whatever it is you're looking for. Murray, it might be a hard question, it might be an easy one, but if you had your druthers or you know, whatever, there's a couple of things you'd really like to see about this wonderful site that we're so fortunate to have in Bayside. What would they be? Well, to me, the fossils are everything. Uh, this site is known worldwide as um, a, a highly significant scientific area. And I would like this to be preserved for all time and to be enjoyed by future generations um, as an interpretation area. And uh, I think that uh, if we... Um, all got together uh, as a community uh, and showed our ownership of this area in striving towards that. They're out and about and chatting with us that uh, they enjoyed as much as I did. Thanks. Thank you. It's rather far away and there's a lot of traffic noise behind me but uh, you can just see how long those cliffs extend and how splendid they are. All full of fossils all the way. This shot's taken from about a kilometre south of where the main film today has been made.